Pence here today. So today we're here to talk about something that uh, is pretty important given the times we live in and given the situation in the world, given the threats we see and given all the natural disasters that have been happening lately. So today uh, we have a person here who has a lot of experience with uh, dealing with natural disasters uh, or uh, other kinds of disasters that uh, involve people and involve people having to leave their homes in some cases. And so we want to ask her her feelings about it and her thoughts about the frequency of this. Is it getting worse and worse over time or is it uh, you know, getting better. So uh, here we go. This is Shannon, and uh, we'd like to first start out with asking her uh, what is it that uh, your specialty is as far as uh, helping people out and uh, doing good for people that are uh, in trouble. Okay, well, um, since I retired, I was looking for a volunteer, <clears throat> excuse me, a volunteer opportunity, and I found an organization that helps with emergency preparedness and disaster uh, recovery. And I felt like that was a good fit for me because of my previous experience um, in my career. Um, so what I do is I'm trained to, uh, right after a natural disaster, now that can be anything from a tree falling on your house to a hurricane to a forest fire to a neighborhood or it could be an individual fire uh, in your single family home or an apartment uh, tornadoes uh, all of the above flooding and I am prepared to go in and set up uh, an emergency shelter for these folks and uh, help them with feeding and I'm also trained in recovery uh, and helping them to move forward with their uh, next step. If their house was completely destroyed, uh, there's other agencies that are local within the county. There's also uh, national and state agencies that will help someone if they have a disaster uh, in their area. And all of these agencies come together and I'm part of that group that helps to people to find a place to live and, and even sheltering them until they do find a place to live because they are happening more and more. Dean mentioned that are these happening more or less? It, it kind of used to be they were seasonal. So we'd have a hurricane season, then we have a tornado season. So our hurricane season could be from like May to November. And then our, of course our tornado season overlaps that in the spring. But we're finding that these things are happening all the time. And then forest fires, which are unpredictable when whole towns are evacuated um, and it's even cities are evacuated, uh, then we're finding that the, the devastation is just because of, uh, it, it could be the, the weather that caused it, it, whereas a fire could be normally just something that would maybe affect one home if the winds were very strong, it could affect an entire street, if not an entire town. So the variables are different in every situation. So have you ever seen a situation where an entire neighborhood or an entire town was yes. uh, wiped out? Completely, I've seen it both in a hurricane situation and a fire where a town was completely destroyed. Uh, thousands, a thousand homes destroyed just just gone gone completely gone very very and it's 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 different because one side of the street could be intact the other side could be to the ground because the you know fires the wind is what affects where the fire goes and uh, tornadoes are very random as well you could have one person who just is missing a few shingles in the next house is wide open so we don't. We, we have to be prepared on things that we aren't ex that we don't know. We are always know about hurricanes ahead of time because they usually start, uh, you know, out in the oceans and seas, and they come in, and we can track those. Somewhat, not tornadoes a little bit, but not really. Flooding, you can expect it if you've had a severe 
uh, lots of rain plus lots of snow and it's going to melt sometime. Um, fire is completely unpredictable. So you have to have these, uh, all of these elements in place before these disasters happen because we know they're going to happen. And they happen, there's some that are going year, that we always have in my organization, something that's going on year round. Um, so the average person, how, how much time would you say the average person has a uh, notification to, that they have to leave their home yeah. and go to a safe area? How much time prep do they usually get? Well, that's going to depend on the disaster. Okay, so what about a hurricane? Uh, how much time do you usually get to evacuate from You can hurricane? have several days on a hurricane, but what can be unpredictable, although they're really pretty accurate with hurricanes nowadays, but um, what can be predictable is that it can switch. You know, it can, it, they can say, okay, this is, this is the area that it's going to, and then all of a sudden it can switch. And last... Um, fall I was involved in a situation where a town was not expecting to be um, affected and they were so they were not uh, evacuated whereas the predictable ones they pre-evacuate and uh, counties have shelters that a lot of them will just leave the state they'll leave the area some people don't leave they take a chance okay so if if you know that, uh, say a hurricane is yeah. coming or flooding is imminent, mm -hmm. what kind of things should people take? And when they get to a county shelter or a federal shelter or some kind of shelter, mm -hmm. how much stuff are they actually allowed to have in the shelter mm -hmm. and what kinds of things? Well, they're going to assume that you come with the clothes on your back and maybe your personal documents. Uh, other than that, you will not be provided right off the bat with clothing. That's a big one. You will get a place to sleep. You'll get food. You'll get a blanket. You won't necessarily get a pillow. But you will, in a hurricane situation, you should have plenty of time to leave. Um, and even in, they, people will stay in their house and board up their windows, which is depending on the strength of your home. If you're in some, uh, you know, like a trailer, you're definitely gonna wanna leave, but if you're in a brick home, maybe you can just uh, board up your windows. But you are, if it's a mandatory um, evacuation, that means they want everybody out, but they still cannot force you completely out, but they will not help you necessarily if you are affected. Um, I'm going to say that you should have a, like what I would call like a deployment bag or some kind of emergency bag and um, there's one in there we could show it's in the other room of what goes what we think goes in it if you want to grab that be careful about the branding on it but there, there's a bag that you should uh, have packed according to your family so let's say you're a family of three or four you have, you say, what could you, what do you need for the next 72 hours is what we suggest. So this bag in here could have, uh, you could have, you know, things that are just in this bag alone is just basic toiletries right here. And there's this, this would give you, and then you could also put in, uh, numbers of, of places that you need to contact because you're not going to remember that when you're in the middle of a situation. So just basically basic hygiene things. You want a blanket, you want all of your personal documents, and you want everything in plastic if you can because this could get wet. You want all of your passwords and then there's a couple ways. I mean, it's not going to be perfect for everybody, but so like a and a computer too, a right? computer, like a laptop or your phone. And you always should have batteries, or you should have an emergency charger. Uh, I have a, 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 actually I have a really nice emergency charger that is solar, so it will charge through the sunlight instead of through electricity because you probably more than likely will not have electricity if you're staying close by 
Um, well, even in a shelter, you might not be able to shelters. Shelter. Shelters are known to go out, but your shelter is not going to be close to where you live. And once you leave your home, you are not going to be allowed to go back in. If you refuse to leave, that's one thing, but nobody's allowed to go back in because they're barricaded. They have National Guard. They'll have police, different, different, or you know, different groups that will be there to save people's lives. But this should be enough. It, you even put uh, dehydrated foods in here. Sounds like you need a pillow too. I would say a pillow. I know that sounds strange. A pillow and a pillowcase were two things that people were asking for uh, in one um, in one disaster that I was there at the very beginning. And we ended up with uh, donations for that because these disasters are not gonna be nationwide. There's, they're just gonna be localized. And some communities like you know, off the Gulf, they're used to hurricanes. Uh, in the Midwest, we're used to tornadoes. Uh, the West, the Northwest, is used to fires. Um, but it could be, it, it could, those kinds of things can affect, other things can affect people. But you should have water, and these should be checked a couple of times a year. So, you know, like when you're checking your um, smoke alarms or whatever, check to make sure that you switch out all of the things that might be perishable so once a year and then you can just grab it some people leave it in their car uh, i was in one situation with a fire where people the fire broke out in the in the town and people were at work they didn't have they wouldn't have even had this because they could not go back in and the only way they really knew if their house was burned was through um organizations that set up in one a specific location and uh, will all of the organizations, the emergency preparedness organizations in several counties or nearby will come in because you're most likely going to go to the next county over because they are not affected and they have uh, all kinds of things in place for their people, but they also will accept people from other counties. So whatever. Does belong in that kit? Yeah, this does. So, you know, even things like, um, you know, something if you have children, you know, something that's going to give them a little bit of happiness uh, along the way. You think of coloring books. Uh, you think of things that are going to occupy your mind because I promise you I've watched people just completely just stop you know just they're just stunned at what's happened to them and they have very little thinking process of what how they're supposed to go forward and so that's what we do so you should have Personal documents, yep. birth certificate, they got driver's license, you should have medication. Yep, medication. You should have all your phone numbers of people to call or your insurance company and all that stuff. Yep. You should have a phone or a laptop or a tablet of some mm -hmm. kind. You should have a charger because you may not be able to charge at the yep. shelter. And you there are... a pillow. You should have things to food. keep you... Uh, some food, mm -hmm. water, some things to keep you company, to read or yep. get your mind off of things. Uh, an extra change of clothing. An extra change of clothing. Uh, uh, it's basically a bug out bag is what is. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a so, bug out bag. So yeah. if something bad's happening, the fire is racing over the top of the hill behind you, you grab it, you get your car and you go. Um, the one thing too is let's say that you can't grab it. And uh, I've been in a couple situations where people just basically had five minutes and they just threw everything that they, you know, could think of. But one of the biggest things is like medications. Some people are on medications they have to take every day. And so what we did is help people, find, you know, of course, they were at our shelter and they would need help getting medications. And the one thing I'm going to suggest without naming names is that you go with a national pharmacy because if you go with a local kind of a mom and, pop. mom and pop or it's just attached to your hospital or it's the nice pharmacist down the road he's going to be affected too and so you need to have your prescriptions on file with a larger pharmaceutical drugstore and you can get your medications and they'll even deliver them out to the um, out 
they'll deliver them out to the shelter. But you are going to be responsible, I would say, for the first couple of days. I've been in situations where people needed dialysis, and this is what we're trained to do. So we are able to get them on a dialysis schedule. Um, some people have you don't do the dialysis, no. you, but you arrange it. A we local arrange hospital. it. Yeah, and if you don't know what your specific county offers, you really should go to these emergency preparedness uh, uh, meetings that they have at the library in different places. I, I just saw one this week, and I am on a lot of Facebook pages for this. And every time I think I know exactly what we should do, I, there's something else that comes up that we didn't know that somebody needed. One was a colostomy bag. And uh, they're all different sizes. I didn't know that. We had to go figure out how to find that. Um, with the fires, it's going to be, uh, one woman told me that she said, she, didn't, she had her two grandkids with her and her husband were there and they put them in the car and they just left. She goes, she didn't even think to grab her purse. And she says, why did I not think to grab my purse? I never leave the house without a purse. And she was, you know, a very intelligent woman. And it was just, um, it's just going to change your life anyway. You just want to make it easier. But I will tell you, I've seen in some communities, especially communities that are better prepared than others. And I will say there are a lot that are better prepared than others. But when they have their, uh, their kind of, congregate area where they're all together all of the um all of the insurance companies would be in this one it could be maybe like a school or it could be a rec center or something all the insurance companies would be there you'd have your uh, place to get your documents replaced they'd even have something for your pet you'd have all these emergency agencies that are um that help your your normal just ongoing feeding uh, and help in any kind of disaster. So, so what? So the, you can go to these shelters mm -hmm. and stay, but they're made to be short term, right? Right. right. So, what if your home is totally destroyed? Mm -hmm. Then, what about long term stuff? Right. How does that get handled? Well, that's a good, really good question because it depends on if you own your home, you're going to work through um, your obviously your insurance company. If you are a renter. It's going to be a little bit harder, especially if you do not have renter's insurance. You're kind of not going to get, well, there's no kind of about it. You're not going to get things replaced. Uh, if you have, if you're renting a home and the home is destroyed, possibly you would get replacement through the homeowner's insurance. I don't know. You need to check these things. And so some renter's insurance might be a renter's good thing. insurance because. I'm, I'm just thinking of one place right now. There was really, when you're looking at a thousand homes and people are all in one town or two towns, um, then there's not going to be a lot of housing available. You need to have an evacuation backup plan so you know where you're going to go because you're not going to find a house or an apartment when thousands of people, you know, or so hundreds you, of people. You are need to be for. able to go to a relative or a friend. And you need to have cash place. and you need to have, uh, make sure you, you have a, a way to get to thousands of, a couple thousand dollars without going through a big deal like you can just go through an ATM or you can just pay for whatever but you need to have money in your account so that you can have these emergencies so like let's say you say I'm never gonna go under two thousand dollars or you have another account just for that because you're gonna need money to either stay in a hotel or to go across the state or to go to family members and I'm gonna tell you right now that's good for a few weeks, but after that, it's probably, for the most part, you're gonna need to find something permanent, and you need to have an idea of what that's gonna be. And you're also gonna probably be out of work because if you had to evacuate your town or your local area, you may not be able to work, or your work might have also been burned up or flooded out as well, right? It could, it could. Uh, this last one I was involved with was just a residential area, so I would say most people were not out of work, but there was a school involved. And um, so you might so not have a school. about a hurricane? The whole town might yeah, be gone. Might. And again, East are used to this. They know how this works. Most people have been through a hurricane. 
Uh, but if you're a transplant or if it comes to you, we've been getting them up the coast, the east coast more. It used to be the Gulf a lot, but now, you know, they're all coming up the east coast. And what's happening there is these people aren't quite as prepared um, for evacuation. And it's the other rule of thumb that we have is just make sure your car is at least a half a tank. You have a half a tank yeah. of gas because the first things that are going to be backed up yeah, the are the gas stations, stations and yeah. the grocery stores. Yeah. So you need to get further away. One group was five hours away from their shelter, five hours. So obviously, you know, the work situation, they weren't going back to work. Yeah. And um, so, it's just, that's the, well, some of these are worst case scenarios, but so, it could happen. So here's a question. Yeah. So. That, that, well, this is War Hawk Defense, and so, you know, we are a channel that talks about uh, guns, firearms, mm -hmm. uh, concealed carry. So what happens if you think, uh, well, I think I better throw my, uh, my gun, my revolver, my pistol in my bug out bag, uh, or in my car and you leave so I carry a gun in my car all the time in a lock box in my car so what happens if I bug out and go to a shelter and my I've got the gun in my car or in my bug out bag then what happens yeah. uh, there's no shelter that's gonna let you bring your gun in and but they will have Do they check you though yeah. oh yes oh yes it they are checked we are ch they are checked doesn't mean we can go check you every time, but yes, they uh, recently we've been checking for they have the vaccine or if they have COVID and then they have to check to make sure there's no firearms. And if there are, they'll lock them up at either the police station or someplace and give you a card where you can retrieve it later. So basically, if you're bugging out and you're taking a firearm or two, yeah. Uh, Either leave it in your car, yeah, if uh, if locked that's how in your car, yeah. outside uh, where it nobody's going to need to know about, or if you take it in the shelter, they'll probably want the local police they'll to tag it. Yeah. to uh, put it in their safe yeah. keeping. So they, they understand. I mean, but I will say the majority of the people do not stay in shelters in some places. The last shelter I was at had 20 people and 1,000 people were involved. But I've been in shelters that have had thousands. So it just depends on the availability of where people have to go. You may say, well, I'm never staying in a shelter. So putting a gun in your bug out bag is perfectly okay. Now, I don't know what rules hotels have or anything like that, but if you have a vehicle, you have your car, you can take whatever you want. It's just sometimes people don't have their cars or if they have a shelter that's far away, they'll bus them up there. And we had one group come in, six buses just full of people and all they carried was a suitcase and they had to leave their vehicles at a big parking lot somewhere else. So I guess they could have driven up, but they offered the bus drive, so. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, this is, uh, I think this has been an interesting conversation and uh, I think we'll probably continue uh, with this in, uh, in the future um, as other things come up, but I think it's been helpful and we appreciate Shannon uh, taking her time with us today to uh, visit about her experiences and she is an active volunteer right now so she sees all this stuff first you know firsthand right up uh, personal you know uh, she's also aware of guns and shooting and uh, so what I think we're saying is that make sure you're prepared Make sure that you have done your homework ahead of time. Make sure you've got your bag ready to go. Your car keeps, uh, you know, half a tank of gas or so. And uh, so before we shut out, we'll let Shannon say any last things that she thinks uh, are important. I think the last thing I want to say is in the recovery phase, um, you have to kind of change your mindset that uh, you're going to be displaced for a long time could be several years uh, some houses can get fixed easily 
and then you can go back. But when it's all concentrated in one area, you've got to remember um, how many, how hard is it going to be to get the work done through c companies, roofing companies, construction companies, and that takes time. And so recovery is rarely uh, fast. And people think, I see this mindset, they think they're going to be in there maybe one or two weeks, and then they realize it might be one or two years that they're going to be displaced. So they think, well, we're just going to be gone, we're going to go home, it's not that damaged, or we're gonna, we have this other place to go. Um, and that's normal thinking. Uh, just know that any disaster to your dwelling is going to take a long time to recover. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Shannon, for talking to us about this stuff, and uh, we appreci appreciate You're everybody welcome. watching. Uh, and we'll say, see you later. <laughs>